Hey, so welcome to another episode of Out of Spec Dave, where I have I have a big crew from the Out of Spec team here out at Copper Mountain. We've had an amazing day. We're in we're, an F-150 we're in Lightning. F-150 Lightning. Which trim is this? This isn't the base one, is it? It's one up from base. One up from base. XLT. Okay. And I'm wondering if the seat lowers because I feel like I'm sitting super high here. I'm just turning off traction. Control. We have been filming all day, and you said you weren't going to go crazy. That's right. Um, and and so you we were. Are you're, are you, I thought you were a man of your word. <laughs> Kyle, what I want to talk to you about today is is something that kind of started, well, at least my awareness of what started was when you were down visiting in Florida and the horrendous time we had charging. And I know that after you left and you landed, you came up or at least you said, now is the time for me to create this new rate your charge. Right. Well, at the time we didn't know the name. We've been, I've been thinking about doing something like this. I guess some of my frustrations were brought out from, I would say our competitors uh, in the space now. And uh, some of them are owned by charge point operators, which is, that's not who should be fighting for EV drivers. They're fighting for, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, you know, themselves to get the most amount of funding to put in chargers, right. which seems wrong. Other outlets out there, I don't think they're necessarily have the wrong intentions. They're just not maybe going about it the way I would, um, you know, maybe sometimes I would say overcomplicating things. I just think we really needed a way to, I would say, document the current state of charging from the EV driver for future EV drivers. Excellent. All right, so Kyle, you, you created Rate Your Charge, and what, what can you tell me a little, a little bit about it? I know I've been posting some things up on Twitter, and what I like about it is that it's real-world check-ins from real people that are experiencing situations that they have, and, yep. and, uh, and I think that's a, that's a great idea. So tell me about the theory and, and how you think it's going. Well, it, it was born out of frustration, I think we all know, right? Um, you know, we, how much of a, actually the best situation would be if this never had to exist, but unfortunately it does because so many times, countless times, we're rolling up to fast chargers that um, don't necessarily work. Yeah. And maybe work, but work in a derated form or work and have safety issues. And there was really no clear way to communicate these uh, issues, or at least the severity of the issue, using any existing platform. And there was no online forum for people to post, you know, a feed of content to basically get your pulse on what's going on in the uh, country at the moment. Because with Rate Your Charge, and we'll get into exactly what it is, you can basically pull up our Twitter feed and know exactly what's going on with every charge point operator from across the uh, across America, which is really cool. And overall, I mean. The reason it exists is to try and force charge point operators, which would be Electrify America, EVGo, ChargePoint, Blink, Shell Recharge. Jewel. Yeah. Well, they are not really, they have one. Oh, they or have two. one. two. It's not and really. And it didn't work. I, I like how you in your video sometimes mention Jewel. <laughs> well, that's because you took me there. I thought it was more than one. I no, don't know. they have like two or three. In oh, America. really? It's All like right. Not... I won't mention them anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. You give them a lot of press for nothing. Right. For leaving us stranded, basically. Yeah, that's true. That's, that is true. <laughs> right. But these types of, uh, you know, and there's plenty others out there as well. There's utilities getting into the space yeah. now. Anyway, what, the whole point of Rate Your Charge is to publicly document if they're working, not working, and if they're not working, we have a lot of expert users using our stuff, maybe try and figure out why. For example, just last night I was charging on an Electrify America charger here in Frisco, Colorado, and uh, the actual connector locking pin wasn't functional at all, which means my charge session initiated, I got full power, no issues, but anyone could just walk over that cable and rip it out of the truck. And I would bet that you could rip that cable out faster than the actual charging equipment would stop charging, which would equal arc flash. And it could kill someone. I mean, it really is a major issue. Really? So wow. think, you know, these types of resources would be, you know, uh, are, are basically here and we're not going to crash into dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, another example was when I was charging at Trumbull a couple of weeks ago in Connecticut, both 350s, they were operating, they were working, but they were both derated to 50. So in and I both, had no way to indicate that on plug share. Right. Well, in both cases, whether, you know, one, there's a significant safety hazard, which now thanks to Rate Your Charge, Electrify America has marked that charger offline. Oh, that's Thanks good. to our reporting and right. our, our outlet. Um, but, uh, you know, if that was not the case, uh, before with PlugShare in or, or any other competitor, that would be considered a hundred percent successful charge. Right. When in fact it was a severe 
uh, you know, safety risk. Right. So rate your charge is to sort of bring the realistic approach, I yeah. would say. Right now it's in its infancy. It's right. just a Twitter page. We have a, a weekly report that Ryan's actually been working on back there. So I'd like to Ryan to talk a little bit about what he's finding because Ryan's really in the nitty gritty. He's checking everyone's check-ins. He's watching what's coming into the feed. He's retweeting. And so we're starting to notice uh, some significant trends. And some trends are great, but I have to say the overwhelming majority are not great. Right. Really pro big problems here. So I guess Ryan, maybe talk a little bit about who's using Rate Your Charge and um, yeah, what, what are you finding we're getting? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, so Rate Your Charge is very much in, in its infancy, as, as you said. And I think one thing that I really do want to mention is currently we have a Twitter page. We just started a Google form and we'll be uh, using that going forward. Uh, however, with Twitter and with, with what we're doing, I do think that there is a chance and a pretty high likelihood that we are getting uh, some skewed results. I think people are more likely to post a negative charging experience than a positive one. Yep. Regardless of, of that, we're seeing a lot of reports that to me, it doesn't matter if, if we're skewing data, if these are just hand selected, any one of these are completely unacceptable in my opinion. Uh, first and foremost, people showing up to a charger and not being able to charge, just no chance. And if they showed up with next to no juice, they're out of luck, they're, they're calling a tow truck. And in some of those instances, they, they didn't really have a good way of knowing beforehand. The app didn't tell them or the app just told them that it failed to communicate, failed to initiate charging, you know, a variety of different, different uh, reasons, but they weren't able to charge. Uh, the next thing that I was seeing a ton of is a lot of charger derating and it either not being reported on the app or just being very un, uh, unclear about what's going on. So. Sometimes on Electrify America, it will show uh, a charger is limited and it'll tell you that. Sometimes it'll show you it's a complimentary session uh, and it'll say it's complimentary because it's limited. Sometimes it won't even tell you why it's complimentary. There's, there's just not the best communication. Uh, a lot of charger, uh, charging users don't really know what's going on when they're, when they're plugging in their vehicle. Is this the full charging speed that they're supposed to be getting? Is it limited by the car, by the temperature of the battery? Or is it the charger itself? Uh, I, I think a lot of these problems, uh, really a lot of it comes down to communication. Uh, and I think that's something that apps really need to uh, continue to improve upon. Yeah, apps, charge point operators, we're seeing just a lack of communication and just this sort of, I would say disaster situation ha happening across um, uh, the networks. Now we have a couple big things that are happening. Tesla opening up their network to CCS in just, you know, weeks, months, sometime soon right. is going to be a make or break situation. A lot of people ask, why do you include Tesla supercharging on rate your charge if it always works? Ryan, we find issues with superchargers actually off often. Yeah, they happen. Uh, we had a couple last week. Uh, I just uh, was reading about one today where an entire site was actually down, which wow. is a failed site. I need to look a bit more into it to see uh, if the app accurately reflected it, if the car would tell them right. if it was actually down or if they just showed up and it was down. Ultimately, I think it's reasonable to expect that charging equipment will fail. I mean, you have hardware in the ground that's user accessible, that's getting beaten by weather. And so I don't think we really get annoyed when stuff is completely offline and doesn't work. Certainly it's not the ideal situation, but if you're on your way to that charger and the app says it's fully online, for example, the EA in Withville, Virginia this week was the big one. Um, you know, the whole site was just fenced off completely oh, yeah. online and people are showing up there. Yeah. Just crazy. And these are just little things. And what really bothers me more than anything is we make some Twitter posts about it on, on rate your charge and within two hours they're all fixed. So it's not like a technical limitation, it's just laziness yeah. that stops these things. So it really shows that unfortunately the EV driver needs to play a role through services like ours to really make uh, travel better for everyone, Right. Which, which is sad that that's the case. Now Alyssa, you've been around uh, since the beginning of Rate Your Charge. What's your viewpoint on it? What do you think about it? Um, I, I think it's great. It's definitely, it's pushing the charge point infrastructure. Uh, a lot of people have been reaching out and wanting to really help. I mean, it's just, it's such a huge issue right now that, I mean, our inbox, just for our email alone, is just flooded with thank you for starting this. And also we want to help out. We want to do more. Let me know what, what we can do to, I mean, just offering services. So the community is definitely there and everybody, and everybody in the end just wants a good user experience. 
and um, hopefully rate your charge is going to help with that and it's going to keep growing. So it's uh, it's definitely an exciting time, but there's there's so much to do. So Kyle, tell me a little bit about your longer term vision. It's amazing how quickly you were able to get this off the ground, harnessing the power of Twitter, right? And and well, how many and our YouTube viewers and our course. YouTube viewers, right? Of course, but how many how many followers or how many subscribers on Twitter uh, is it up to now? We're almost at six thousand, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So six thousand. We had you know the big hit. We got a, you know maybe two thousand in the first couple days. Yeah. Um, and that's just because those are the real those are people like us yeah. that are hardcore EV drivers, constantly road tripping that honestly need a dependable way to charge their vehicle anywhere. It doesn't have to be a, along a specific corridor. Right. And then I think it's actually going to keep growing. For example, we've just started to see some of these issues make it more into the mainstream or in different areas of media. For example, there's a YouTuber who I watch, I'm a big fan of, it's called The Stradman over in, U in Utah. He got stuck in Green River with his Hummer EV, not able to charge. Oh, Full boy. communication. Is that that little coffee charge. shop place? Yeah, at the coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I thought that'd be cool to, to buy that sometime yeah. and turn it into an out of spec <laughs> yeah. stop. But I don't right. know if I want to be tied to an EA site. That's the problem. I'd yeah. like to deliver reliable charging. Right. Maybe that's too much shade throw. But, you know, what I'm <laughs> saying. Uh, but, you know, another big thing I was going to say. So superchargers opening up is the first big thing. The second big thing is we're really starting to see this shift in the charging industry where um, charge point operators, again, all of the companies that we mentioned, but also the individual people there are actually finding through, I think, our coverage on YouTube and Rate Your Charge and others that, oh crap, they actually need to pay attention to this. Right. Um, if you go on LinkedIn, for example, the head of charging for GM, Stellantis, Rivian, you name it, they're all following Rate Your Charge and they were all following Rate Your Charge within five minutes of me launching that Twitter page. Wow. I mean, these are people that are making industry level decisions about who they're cars are going to charge with. We really are making an impact on, you know, who's choosing who from an automaker partnership perspective. Right. So, so capturing the data, I know Ryan, you mentioned that there's a Google page that you can, if you're not a Twitter user or what have you, but I'm curious about the longer term vision for potentially creating an app or what are your thoughts about how to evolve this from literally what you have today or what we have today into something a little bit more industrial? Absolutely. I, I think that's uh, a very natural next step is creating an app. I think that will help immensely just with adoption, uh, much more common for people to actually use it. Uh, and then I think we'll be uh, less likely to have skewed data. If it's a e really easy thing to do, it, hopefully we'll get more good charges. Uh, people who check in, just quick little picture video, uh, make it as painless as possible. Yeah. Uh, from there, I think we can do some pretty interesting analytics and, and do uh, get a lot of information from what we uh, what we're getting we've got a lot of unique information and a lot of unique perspectives and I, I don't think anyone else has accessibility to any of it right now this is clearly a unique data set that well, we're the only ones collecting high quality photo and video pretty much for us to count the data as being fact right we right. always ask for some sort of media to prove what the user is saying right because what we don't want to have is someone who got pissed off at charge point and then every charger they're just like ah oh, charge point sucks yeah you know i'm just using them as an example right uh but we really want to see show us the fault happening show us the charging session show us what's around um, and no one is uh, sort of uh, collecting this amount of data right. ever before. Tesla is following us on Rate Your Charge. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's really a very unique uh, point in the market and I think different than others in the space. But to me at least, we're making the app that I want as an EV driver. Right. Kyle, I want to shift gears just a little bit in terms of what you think the where, where do you see the state of charging in the United States? What is it going to look like three years from now? I mean, we're having situations now where auto manufacturers are including charging as free with the, you buy the car, you get two or three years free. Mm -hmm. We see people charging locally when they should be putting level twos in their houses and if they have the ability to do that. But what, you know, we're starting to see even much more so now on the East Coast lines and and, um, and and frustrated people and all of that. But where do you see this going in three years? What what do you see happening? So, um, don't know. Really don't know. It, it's gonna, it's right, you know, 
I guess a year and a half, two years ago, I said we were in the golden age of owning an electric car. Yeah. Because the infrastructure was still crap, but at least there were ports that you can move around to. A lot of the infrastructure is brand new at the time. So like a lot of it was software bugs, not actually hardware malfunctioning. And um, yeah, in three years, well, we're certainly entering or have already entered probably the worst time to own an electric car. And that would be failing infrastructure, not enough infrastructure, even if it was working perfectly, an uneducated driver population who it's their first electric car. They don't know. We don't have mass knowledge of kilowatts. But, and charging but can, I, can I stop you right there? And when you say not good to own an electric car for the use case, if you're going to rely on it for road tripping. I even think in normal, you know, you buy a car not to be tethered to your house. You buy a car to, you know, if there's an emergency, get somewhere. Right. Fair enough. And so regardless if you plan on going on road trips or not, I bet so many people have bought an electric car thought i'm just going to stay in the city and then said oh there's a wedding here i gotta go to yeah or oh i gotta go somewhere and sure you can rent a car but some things are last minute and honestly you should be able to rely on the vehicle you spend a premium for electric cars are more expensive uh and you should have a better experience you shouldn't be constrained i think right and so uh, i've kind of stopped recommending electric cars in general uh to like new people like new users who who are not nerds you know, you and me, we can get around it. It's fun. It's cool. We're, we've are we been living through this. It's great to document the state. But um, right now is probably not the time to buy a new electric car. And what's funny is the government's incentivizing new electric cars like crazy. And so there's just totally like delayed, lagged messaging here yeah. going on. And um, unfortunately, there's a lot of programs to put charging in, uh, you know, for this NEVI funding going in. But I think that's going to be a pretty big disaster. Right. Uh, they, they claim there's going to be uptime requirements. They're not saying how they're going to measure uptime requirements. You have certain charge point operators arguing for a 50% or greater capacity of chargers at a site right. uh, being online as working. I think that's a bit of a shame. And um, we're really, uh, really in, in going into the dark ages, I would say. I hate to be so grim about it because the cars are getting so good. Yeah, they are great. This well, lightning rocks. I know, I know. The cars are getting, they're getting better and better. And um, and, and look, you know, I think I'll put the positive spin on this yeah, whole thing. You go all right. I'm always negative. I, about I, think, I think the positive spin is that there are a lot of households out there that are two car families. Okay. And and so if you've got one car that you can use as your daily driver and the other one that you, you take on road trips, there are people that I'm seeing and talking to that are making the transition, and and to you know at least one out of two cars that are that are their, um, you know their cars that they'll have in the driveway. Um, I think that I'm hoping that the infrastructure will somehow catch up to the demand and the you know how many cars are being bought, but I just don't see the business case there. So the positive side of this is that I hope that the government is going to smartly spend their money with the types of firms that can put the infrastructure out there. So not just put out, oh yeah, we put DC fast charging and the next thing you know is a 50 kilowatt station, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we want to see it, the, the dollars being spent in a smart way over the next three years well, they're, and, they're and hopefully trying. that will happen. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly there's 150 kilowatt uh, minimum yeah. for NEVI funding. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of uh, people are Charging companies are fibbing that with 200 amp limitations, which is really 75 to 80 kilowatts on average. Mm. And so that's a real shame. Although, you know, because we've been so loud on the coverage, I know our podcasts, our videos are being brought up in these NEVI meetings. They're literally watching our videos. Wow. Uh, I know North Carolina was the most recent one where our coverage made a difference and they decided to implement a uh, more than 200 amp limitation. They basically said right. no 200 amp cables are allowed. Right. Um, well, you know what, what What I found fascinating was I did not know that PlugShare was owned by EVgo. Right. Yep. I had no idea. Yeah. Real shame, actually. And and so what I'm what I'm really happy about is to me this is this rate your charge and and what we're doing and what you've you've done and brought to light with Ryan's help and everybody on the team is a real grassroots effort. So what I'll recommend everyone do spread the word about rate your charge. If you don't have a Twitter account, maybe you're willing to think about getting one, but use Google Sheets. Stay with us. Continue to watch our videos and uh, watch the space as far as us developing an app perhaps uh, in a short period of time. Well, I've been meeting with app developers to try and get that off the ground. It's very expensive, of course. But yeah. you know, the one thing I think um, I'm most excited about here are these weekly reports. That w We had our first weekly report go out this week. And you know, on Twitter, it's actually not the best medium, I think, to convey all this because you just get flooded with charger check-ins. Um, but when you can see all of that data equal 
okay, here's how we rank based on reliability. Here are the top stories. Here are the links to the biggest problems in the tweets. I'm okay that our data skewed a little bit negative because we shouldn't have any negative. Yeah. Um, so at, at the end of the day, the uh, you know the expectation is good charging. Right. And if it's less than that, then definitely speak up. But if you can, I always do check in if you have a good session as well. It helps right. us get a better accurate picture of the DC fast charging landscape overall. That's our goal with these reports. Right. But ultimately, if there are problems, we want to know about those more than good charging. No, sessions. absolutely. Well, Alyssa, Max, Ryan, thank you very much for sticking with us in this car ride. And this is a great truck. Hey, Kyle, thank you so much for this uh, for this video. And uh, I really um, I look forward to seeing what's going to happen. Ryan, you're going to be a busy man. All right, we expect nothing but above the rim, above the rim weekly reports and uh, keep tweeting out those things. We know well, they come in packs, you know, all of a sudden my phone starts lighting up and- uh, well, We try to do every hour. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all good. But anyway, thanks again, everyone for watching another episode of Out of Spec Dave, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care now, bye-bye.